and welcome to Design Education Talks, the collaboration between New Art School and Design Deducts Podcast. Our guest today is Penny Hay. Welcome, Penny. Hey, thank you for inviting me. It's fantastic to have you here. So tell us about you and your work. So, well, where do I start? So I'm an artist and a researcher, uh, an educator and a mentor. I, at, currently, I'm reader in creative teaching and learning at Bar University in the UK. I'm also a research fellow in the Centre for Cultural and Creative Industries. And I'm director of uh, research for a charity that's now called House of Imagination. It used to be called Five by Five, but I'll tell you more about that later. Fantastic, fantastic. So what, what, how, did you, how did you get up, up, to, up to this point? How did you get into teaching? So, well, my first degree was in fine art and education, and then I specialised in the arts in primary schools particularly, but I was very interested in school refusers. So I used to re-engage children and young people uh, in, in the arts back into their learning so that they could find that kind of intrinsic motivation to learn. I became an advisory teacher uh, I disappeared up to Glasgow for the Year of Culture and co-designed a, uh, an exhibition for children and young people with Ken Baines and Krisha Brahotska. And then for some strange reason, I was just finishing my master's in 91, it must have been. And uh, I was sitting on a Friday evening in a head teacher's sitting room having a cup of tea as you do after a long week and the phone rang and it was the Institute of, the Institute of Imagination I was going to say the Institute of uh, Education in London and they wanted a specialist in child development and art and design so I applied for the job and um, after the second interview got the job I was there for a couple of years and then moved on to Goldsmiths where I was for seven years and during that time I ran uh, lots of courses around arts education and worked at Tate Modern before it opened, the couple of years before it opened on their learning policy. And in, then in 2000, I moved back to Bath to have a child who's now 19 um, and set up five by five. So as I said earlier, it was five artists, five schools, five galleries. And then 20 years on, we've worked with all art forms and not just schools, but from early years right through to 25, 25-year-olds. 25 fantastic, fantastic. So but you're involved in many projects uh, lately. So tell us about them. Yeah, so the, the charity is now working closely in partnership with the university, which is fantastic. So every day I set up these experimental sites for learning uh, and research them. Uh, and they're called different things, but I always say to my line manager, you know, that I'm doing the same thing every day, really, but in, in more depth in different contexts. So, for instance, our signature projects are School Without Walls uh, and Forest of Imagination. So School Without Walls is a project that's now in its 10th year. And that's really about uh, reconceptualizing the arts curriculum in primary schools. So putting the arts at the heart of the curriculum, but co-design the curriculum with children alongside teachers, artists, creative professionals working initially in the egg theatre, but now we work with museums in Bath. And so that children see themselves as learners. So they're taking responsibility for their learning alongside people that care as companions in learning and thinking about how their inquiries and ideas develop. So we're we still have curriculum coverage, but we're putting their interests and their fascinations at, at the heart of the process. So I'm very interested in self-directed inquiry or co-inquiry. My PhD was in uh, looking particularly at children's development in visual arts, but uh, looking at their developing learning identity as artists. So in School Without Walls, we were very inspired by the practice in Reggio Emilia in Italy as well. So children as protagonists of their own learning uh, with adults, um, as, as I said, as companions, but as lenders of tools and processes. So yes, it's a, it's a fantastic project. We've now worked with 12 schools over 10 years. Um, and because of COVID, we, we've had to support schools online, obviously, but we will be uh, reopening those spaces when we can. 
And the second signature project that you probably know is Forest of Imagination. That's in its seventh year. And that was really a conversation around kind of nine, ten years ago with Andrew Grant, the landscape architect who designed Gardens by the Bay in Singapore, a £500 million project paid for by the Singapore government. Uh, and he's a, a, a local Bath resident. His children go to local state schools. And really importantly, he's very committed to the relationship of nature in the city. His strapline is around human nature. So um, bringing in our strapline, the, the freedom to follow fascinations, we um, we co-designed, co-founded forests. And each year we take over a familiar space in the city and reimagine it and bring nature, creativity and imagination to the fore so that everybody's invited to have a conversation about creativity and imagination. And, and you know, he, Andrew says, the forest is the home of imagination. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what are the challenges that you faced uh, since, since COVID? Well, <laughs> how long do you have? Oh. So uh, since March, uh, to use that well-worn phrase, we have pivoted to a digital platform. Uh, and I think that I've said on various blogs that I do think that um, this crisis has engendered real change and possibility. So we've had to really think about creativity in a crisis and together with the forest team we met every Monday from May until October and each week we co-design an offering if you like online so that each week an artist was profiled and then they handed the baton to the next artist so we were working with local artists and international artists I'm lucky to work alongside Andrew Amundsen who works in uh, Alafio Eliasson's studio in Berlin, as well as many loyal local artists. Uh, I can't name them all, but they're all featured each week on our website. Fantastic, fantastic. So what are the challenges that you see uh, in art and design education? Well, politically, I think that possibly in England especially, that the education system is broken. I think we need to reimagine education. We need to reimagine learning going forward even more so now than ever. We were lucky that um, our dear patron, Sir Ken Robinson, who we'd worked with for 20 years, well, I'd worked with him for 30 years, but he'd been our patron for 20 years of our charity. And I think all, in fact, <laughs> the book is here. Um, in 1999, uh, Ken worked when published many years before, but published in 99, All Our Futures. And I was talking to his daughter the other day, and it's absolutely as pertinent today, apart from the paragraph on technology, as um, it has ever been. So I do think we need to revisit the principles around creativity and critical thinking and culture. I think we need to ensure that every child, no matter what their background or circumstance, has access to a high quality art, craft, design, cultural education, creative education. The new uh, Let's Create strategy from Arts Council England is really good and it places the importance of creativity in everybody's lives. So it democratises creativity. I think what we need to do going forward is maybe pay more attention to professional development for cultural professionals so that we create a community of practice and that we can work together to support a reimagined education. So one example is that at our university, we've redesigned our postgraduate um, certificate in education course. and We've placed the four Cs, well, five Cs at the heart. So at the moment we've got creativity, critical thinking, uh, care, compassion, um, in fact, I want the fifth to be climate. But I think, that, you know, if you think about that as a notion that curiosity and imagination are in everything and they need to be foregrounded. I think if children can develop, children, young people especially, can develop those habits of mind of an artist around making connections and being curious and being fascinated by something, they really want to follow that line of inquiry because they're genuinely interested in finding out and exploring possibilities. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. So how can you think we can help uh, more early years? Uh, because I understand that there are some challenges there too. And, and all, the, all the bases are in early years in a way. Uh, yes, yeah, so I think the misconception on, around um, early years, well, a lot of my colleagues will agree with this, is that, you know, that there, there shouldn't really be a baseline assessment for early years. I, I think there's an organisation in the UK called More Than a School. Children are more than a school. And I think that children's development, especially 0 to 3, but 0 to 7 in the early years around children um, being given that chance to play and play to find their um, fascinations, but also to be able to support that with adult playfulness. So I think at the moment, the, there seems to be too much emphasis on standards and performance and testing. And, and it's quite shocking that it's seeped into the early years framework. I personally don't really agree with SATs at uh, Key Stage 2 um, either. And I think that that's, well, Key Stage 1 or 2. And I think that if we could get away from a performance-led curriculum where we're starting to talk about the way children learn and the way they learn best, that would really imp improve the context. But as you said, there's been uh, 30 years uh, with Ken Robinson. So how can we really get that into, into practice? into policy? So we are working at the moment, I'm part of the across party political group um, in art, craft and design education that's run by um, Sharon Hodgson and supported by Susan Coles. And I think that's a really important group that talking across the Commons and the House of Lords, thinking about how we can reimagine education, especially arts and design education, arts plural, um, while, of course, each art form and craft and design has its own integrity, I think it's about giving them as much profile as the core subjects. And personally, I, I don't believe in siloed, siloed learning. I think it's about interdisciplinary and creative practice. So really thinking about how if we're co-designing a curriculum alongside children with real world problems, so we're, we're putting at the center kind of issues around social, cognitive and environmental justice. I think we need to return to the purpose of education, the values of education, rather than just having a package delivered content led education. Absolutely, absolutely. Especially now with the new challenges that uh, COVID has brought into, into families. Absolutely. 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 And especially around the digital divide, you know, we, we've got a really beautiful project in Bath working alongside Bath Cultural Education Partnership. So that's our charity, the House of Imagination, a university, the Egg Theatre, the Holborn Museum, Bath Festivals, Mentoring Plus, which is a charity that supports young people at risk in the city. And uh, we were all lucky to get some emergency funding from the Arts Council. So we put 10% of our budgets into supporting families most in need, most impacted by COVID. And our university have supported that initiative with um, a digital internship. So we've appointed two artists, so theatre artists, James Baldwin and Lucy Cassidy, to co-design these beautiful, interactive, uh, creative adventure boxes. Um, one's called the Society of the Protection of Magical Creatures, which is kind of for uh, younger children, and Innocentville for older children. So watch this space because they're, they're really beautiful and hopefully at each iteration we'll be able to share those. Fantastic, fantastic. How can our viewers and listeners best find you? So best find as well. <laughs> Um, we, we try and communicate our learning through our different websites. So each of our projects got its own designated web, website. So our charity, we're just about to launch a new website actually with the House of Imagination. So we use some of our emergency funds to redesign that. And also Forest of Imagination has its own website. So does School Without Walls. Um, we have another project in India working with the... Arts and Humanities Research Council, working with um, a, an experimental lab in Mumbai, 
for uh, children and families who live in informal houses. And, and that curriculum is very much around a kind of responding to reimagining waste, survival, work, issues of living now, especially with COVID. So that's also available. That's called Compound 13 because of the place in Darrowvy. Um, and also we use Twitter and Instagram. We've got a brilliant partnership with The Big Draw. So we often have live Instagram events. We had a lovely one with Andrew Amundsen uh, reconnecting us to nature in Berlin and, and one with Tim Viner, who's a professor in illustration at Basel University. So we try hard. We're a, we're a small charity with a big reach, but the affiliation with the university is really brilliant because together we what we try and show is how you can make creativity visible how it becomes then palpable, how you can see real life learning. Our wonderful head teacher who sadly died the year before last, but she used to talk about, you know, the relevance of learning with respect and research and reciprocity, if I can say that word, um, relationships at the heart of learning. Fantastic. Any last piece of advice you'd like to leave us with? Well, I, I think I, I totally believe that everyone is an artist. I think that some people choose to make that profession. I think what we try and do is support children, and young people in those creative pathways for learning so that they can see themselves as an artist, that that is a developing identity, you know, that they're being and becoming, and that's a dynamic process. Uh, and my book hopefully will be out next year, which is called Children Are Artists. And I think as a kind of last um a last word i think i am a great fan of bob and roberta smith's work and i do believe that art is a human right fantastic thank you so much penny for a fantastic conversation and uh, i'll be in touch and all your developments thank you, thank you.